as we talk about uncertainty propagation from measurements that have uncertainties associated with them to the results of some calculation where we'd like to know not just the result but also the uncertainty in our result, another common case that comes up is the case where we're multiplying or dividing two numbers, products or quotients of numbers. Uh, the same rules apply to both. And if, just for example, I can do a very basic calculation in physics, a distance equals rate times time problem, you know, velocity times time problem, and in one dimension, and that's a product. And let's just imagine that I have measured the speed of my object to be 4.5 centimeters per second, plus or minus 0.5 centimeters per second. And I've measured the time of travel to be 12 seconds, 12.0 seconds, plus or minus 0.6 seconds. I have those measured values, and I want to know what will be the final value and uncertainty for the distance traveled x. Well, uh, for the actual value, the base value, as usual, it's exactly what you'd think it is. 4.5 times 12. If I multiply that, that's 9 times 6, so 54. Uh, that means that this is going to be 54 centimeters per second times seconds is centimeters. But I'm not sure what the uncertainty is. We need to find a rule for finding the uncertainty. As before, there are going to be three possible methods before when I talked about sums and differences and uncertainty propagation there. There are going to be three possible methods for this, for adding up these uncertainties. But let me point out that it's not as simple as you might think it is. Uh, just for instance, one of the methods, the, the first method we're going to talk about is the worst case sum. And if we use the same rules that we normally use for uh, addition or subtraction problems, we would say, oh, I just say that I add up the uncertainties. Delta x equals delta v plus delta t for the worst case sum version. And I do that and I get 0 0.5 centimeters per second plus, always plus, 0 0.6 seconds. And at this point, the physicist in you should be screaming because you can't possibly add two quantities that have different units associated with them. This is one of the many reasons to always, always keep track of the units in every step of every calculation you ever do, really. It will always show up, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Clearly, this can't be the right way to propagate uncertainty in a product because the units don't have to match. So there has to be another way. And in fact, this wouldn't have the right properties that we want either uh, in, in terms of the final answer we come up with. It turns out that the right way to propagate uncertainties is relative uncertainty. Remember that relative uncertainty or relative error is the ratio of say delta v over the absolute value of v or delta t over the absolute value of t or delta x over the absolute value of x. Uh, all those absolute value signs are just to guarantee that the uncertainties we come up with are always positive quantities. Remember the plus or minus is sort of built in here. The delta x, the delta t, those all have to be positive numbers to represent what we want them to in these cases. So relative uncertainty of these ratios. I can do that for these things. 0.5 over 4.5. Uh, for example, note that the, in the relative uncertainty, the units always cancel out. Uh, this has a relative uncertainty of plus or minus, let's see, 0.5 over 4.5 units cancel out. I get 5 over 45 is 1 ninth. That's about 0 0.111, or I might call that 11.1%. That's more digits than I need. It's about 11%. Here, the relative uncertainty in T, 0.6 over 12, is going to be, let's see, uh, if it were 6 over 12, that would be 1 half. So this is 1 over 20, 5% uh, plus or minus 0 0.05, which is 5%. So those are my relative uncertainties in these two quantities. And now that I have the relative uncertainties, the rules for my three possible methods are going to be very straightforward and very familiar. They're going to be that the worst case sum The worst case sum method simply says that the relative uncertainty in x, delta x over 
x. I'm going to be lazy. All my quantities are positive. I'm going to just leave out the absolute value signs in this problem. Delta x over x equals delta v over v plus delta t over t. Just add up those relative uncertainties. In our case, that comes out to be delta v over v, we said, was 11% plus delta t over t, we said, was 5%. And that comes out to be 16% as our uncertainty. I guess my delta x doesn't have the plus or minus in it. But plus or minus 16% will be my uncertainty in, uh, in x in this case. That's my relative uncertainty. OK, that's one method. Next method that we, can, that we can use is to look at the dominant error. The dominant error method, remember, is where we just take the largest one, delta x over x, is equal to, which one's bigger? Well, it's going to be the max of delta v over v and delta t over t. Again, just the largest relative uncertainty. Here I look at it, I say, all right, 11% it is. 11%. The concepts behind these are exactly the same as they were for uncertainty propagation with sums and differences. It's just we have to use relative error instead of absolute error here. And it's working out fine. You'll notice, by the way, since relative error is always unitless, that guarantees I have no problem adding units here. Finally, the last method, the one that is the gold standard, as explained in the previous video, is adding in quadrature. Add errors, uncertainties in quadrature. And again, quadrature refers to squares, quad, or lateral, or something, squares. And it's just adding the squares like the Pythagorean theorem. And this one, I'm going to go down a line. Delta x over x equals the square root of delta v over v squared plus delta t over t squared. So in that case, it is the square root of delta v over v was my 11%. I'll do 11.1% squared plus 5% squared. And when I do that square root, <coughs> I have to look this one up since I don't know, can't do this one off the top of my head. When I do that square root, I come up with about 0 0.1218, which is basically 12%. Again, compare these things, these three approaches. The adding and quadrature approach, which is the gold standard, is always between the dominant error approach, which is basically a minimum, and the worst case sum, which is basically a maximum. This is in between. Remember, this all assumes, all of these, the adding and quadrature in particular, and dominant error, assume that these are independent uncertainties, so that varying one of them is independent from varying the other. Errors in this measurement are independent of errors in that measurement. And if that's the case, then you think of these as sort of at right angles can, metaphorically to one another, and we get this deal. Notice, though, as I've mentioned before, even though this is only about twice as big, the true result, the best result, the 12% uncertainty, is basically the same, is very, very close to the dominant error result, and is quite far, quite, quite a bit less than the worst case sum. This is another illustration of how the dominant error approach is a very good approximation to the quadrature result in a lot of cases. And these aren't all that different. These numbers aren't all that different. The more different they are, the better an approximation dominant error turns out to be. All right, so adding quadrature, I get 12%, 12.18% if I want to be really picky about it. So what is my absolute uncertainty in x? To, I, I really want to know how much do I trust this 54 centimeters? Well, at this point, I can just solve. Delta x itself equals x times 12.18%. And when I multiply that out, I get basically uh, approximately 6 centimeters. Remember, I usually round absolute error, I, absolute error off to one significant figure. Uh, I'm keeping two digits in this percent error only because it starts with a 1. And if it starts with a 1 or a 2, I usually keep two digits. But anyway, six, uh, 6 centimeters. So I would report for my final answer that x equals... 
54 centimeters plus or minus 6 centimeters, or I could say plus or minus 12 percent. And that's how you propagate uncertainty for a product or a quotient of two numbers. Quotients will be the exact same story I, in, in propagating uncertainties. It's a little weird. You think, oh, but I'm dividing. Doesn't that divide? No, no. Relative error takes into account the division. That's built in to the way relative error works. So it's pretty cool that way. And with that, we have error propagation for a sum or for a product or a quotient.